All right, guys, so here is my top 10 list of 2016. I have not been procrastinating. I have been being thorough by making sure that 2016 did not slip out one final great movie before it finally died its inevitable death. Now, I just want to state that, of course, I did not see every film released in 2016. There are roughly 20 films a week released in the UK, and I get to two. So, from the 10% that I did manage to see, the top 10 films are... <laughs> the Nice Guys. Okay, I love crime films, I love snappy writing, and for Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe to appear in a film like this was absolutely a godsend. Shane Black makes some incredible writing, the jokes were funny, it was the only film during the summer months I gave my highest rating to. Naturally, it bombed horrifically, naturally we're not getting a sequel, but if you can find this, if you can check this out, I recommend you do so, because who doesn't love a film where porn saves the day? Don't Breathe and The Shallow. Sony, let's be real here. Internet pipsqueak to multinational corporation. You can't make a franchise movie to save your lives. Ghostbusters, unwatchable. How are we going to fix James Bond after what you've done to him? But if you get, but if Sony chooses to release a small, low budget film where person A is trapped in location B whilst trying everything in their power to get to location C, then that is going to be a good, tense film. So a lot more of these, please, and a lot less franchise films. <laughs> Number eight, The Hateful Eight. Quentin Tarantino has said that he is going to stop after two more films, which means that we are arguably going to lose the last director who's got a blank check to make 18 films. And this was an absolute corker, which shows that when he's on point, he is on point. It's a very simple story. Eight people are trapped in a cabin thanks to a blizzard. But things are not what they appear. There is a lot of violence, there's a lot of swearing, there's a lot of Tarantino-esque dialogue. And I loved it. I loved the fact that it was shot in old school style. I loved the old school music, I loved the characters, I loved the dialogue. Hell, in some cinemas they even had an intermission. That hasn't happened since one of the Lord of the Rings films, I think. Absolutely to be seen if you are not a minor. Number seven, Zootopia. Okay, the first animated film on the list. Zootopia is an absolutely incredible film showing that, yeah, you can come to the big city with hopes and dreams and you might not achieve them. You may, but the most important thing is, is that you try. And you never know, you might change something, you might prove somebody wrong, you might make things better. And the animation was great, the characters was great. I absolutely loved Idris Elba. Idris Elba stole the film for me. <laughs> Number six, Victoria. Okay, so this film has got mumble dialogue. It's a 90 minute film based off of a 12 page script. It's got characters whose names I could barely recall even as I was watching it, and you've pretty much got to turn the subtitles on. But what this film has, along with location changes, it's also got car chases and action scenes. It is one long, unbroken take. It's not like Birdman where they did all sorts of clever tricks where they played around with camera angles and they zoomed into a door and zoomed out. No, this is one long, unbroken take. Absolutely, definitely worth checking out. One girl, one night, one city, one take, one amazing film. Number five, room. Imagine living your entire life in an 11 foot by 11 foot room and then discovering the real world. That's what happens in Room, an amazing, heartbreaking film with incredible acting and many, many well-deserved awards. Hell, they even built an actual 11 foot by 11 foot set and then tried to move the camera around it, which included the director hiding in a bathtub. That's how dedicated they were to this film. Number four, The Big Short. Remember Inside Out, that amazing film about the financial crisis that nobody saw? Well, now they put Selena Gomez in a little black dress, Margot Robbie in a bubble bath, given Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Christian Bale and Brad Pitt some amazingly sharp writing and created a funny, heart-rending and terrifying film based off of the incredible true story. <laughs> Number three, Spotlight. Another film based on a true story, Spotlight tells how the Boston Globe uncovered the massive scandal of child molestation and cover-up within the local Catholic Archdiocese. It shook the entire Catholic Church to its core and features amazing acting from an all-star cast and it's currently the 193rd best film of all time according to IMDb. <laughs> Number 2. Corbo and the Two Strings that this film is currently the 64th biggest box office bomb of all time proves that the human race doesn't deserve nice things. It's a visually stunning, deep, funny, touching, thrilling film made in the nearly extinct art of stop motion. I'm still not quite sure why they cast Matthew McConaughey in it. 
But when I tell you this film took them five years to make, one single fight scene set on a boat took 18 months, and it's some of the most visually incredibly spectacular filmmaking I've ever seen, you know you've just got to drop everything and see it now. And my number one... Chuck Norris versus Communism. Okay, so in the red corner, you've got Nikolai Ceausescu's authoritarian regime, allegedly the most rigidly stylist in the entire Eastern Bloc. And in the blue corner, 80s movies copied onto videos, ask your dad, so many times that you could barely see what was happening. If you ever doubted that film can be a force for good in this world, watch this film. If you feel like there is no hope, watch this film. Because one man and one woman, armed with only a microphone, a pair of headphones and some video machines, pretty much ended the Cold War without firing a shot. And that, to me, makes it my number one film of 2016. But what did you guys think, and what was your number one film of the last year? Comment below and let me know. I'm Daniel, this has been a What on Earth. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.